Welcome back to the greenhouse and if you're new, welcome. We're out here developing our pond with water. We've had to use water to excavate this. It's been quite the process and it's been on the back burner, hasn't had a whole lot of highlights other than short videos. So I wanted to take the time and show what we're doing with this. And I wanted to show how far along we were because we've shown a little bit of updates along the way with previous videos. So I wanted to get into this and show what we're doing with this water today. We've got a ton of little projects and experiments going on around the greenhouse. As we're going into the second week of November here, we are are definitely seeing some cold temperatures so we're dealing with cold temps but the greenhouse is still alive we've still got tomatoes we can check everything out here real quick we've got all these tomatoes they are actually coming down because they are seriously getting burnt up or frostbitten basically on the edge of the greenhouse we can check these out it's not horrible but you can see that the tops of them and they're starting to kind of rot and draw bugs so we've got to get these out of here you can see those little flies coming so we've got to get these out of here they didn't work as long as i thought so the first second week of november is as long as we were able to keep them in here i mean they'll probably stay alive longer if i prune them down clean them up and give them better airflow but i want to dedicate that bed to a bunch more cold hardy and cold weather crops that we'll be able to for sure eat and we don't have to worry about them dying back so we've got a lot of progress to make with all of the tomatoes being excellent reworking the bed and planting a whole ton of crops using all of those hoops over it and then covering everything and then we will finish our geothermal down here and run it into each of our tunnels on this side for guaranteed temps throughout the winter that geothermal is a must for a winter gardener inside a greenhouse or inside your house whatever you can use your geothermal for So let's jump down in here I have about two feet of soil excavated from the ground level maybe a little bit more in the middle where it's kind of concave I have to break all this soil up with my pitchfork and then we had to excavate it out and then we sifted through the rocks and these are all the rocks we found right here I'm gonna go kick the water on and let this run and fill up and we've basically just been moving these rocks around we started at this end breaking the soil up with water and then we moved it over here and we're still breaking the soil up we've still got 50 to 60 gallons of water in this tank that we've got to get out of here and got to get this cleaned up for all of our pumps to run water through our compound post heating let's kick the door open here oh so this is our compost heating area you can see where it was transferring in we used a whole bunch of free and cheap insulation we had our air hose we've got our copper tubing down here that runs to the pole that was in the middle so we had so. a ton of free heat from this and that's why we got to get this tank cleaned up here because we are going to be running all of these systems to heat the greenhouse throughout the winter right in this corner with this tank of water and then we're going to potentially be heating this pond up with some of the extra heat from our compost. So if all that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel because that's pretty much all we do here is a whole bunch of free heating experiments and trying to be as self-sufficient as possible. So let's get right into today's video. Turn this camera over to the corner there. So I just got this little alligator clip hooked up and we're going to peg this wire on and we've got power. So let's check this out. So we're using free simple solar power to move this water and we're just moving this rock cluster around as we slowly excavate this out. So as we worked our way down, we slowly put this little hose out and ran 20 gallons of water onto it. It fills up and then all of it soaks in. This is our next area that we're working on right here. As you can see the development of it, we've got a nice good line here that we're working down and the moisture has really allowed us to break this up, get it up out of the soil. We've been using these buckets and stuff to get it out of here and the tools are very important. So your tools are just as important. We've got a nice little flat shovel, a nice spade shovel, and I gotta wash all these obviously and this nice short fork this fork is super strong super durable nice thick iron old school fork that I found for dirt cheap I think I got it for free actually from a good old boy so he just let me have this and this was a very very good tool to get because 
It is handy for compost, for soil, for rock, for all types of stuff. There's a ton of uses for a little short fork like this that is super sturdy. I wanna give a top view of how this is coming together. So we just ran all our water down this side to absorb all the water. You can see where the water has absorbed into the soil. You can see all of the dry soil. I just washed my bricks. So some of this soil is wet, but all of the soil is so dry that we have to get it soaked to be able to break it up. So the pond development is all the water's running down here. We excavate it, excavate, and then we keep breaking it up. And you can see how we're pulling the walls out with this water. And then we'll just move it around the whole circle and continue all of this process. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move these rocks. That way we can get an idea of how we're doing this. So that was a simple quick look at how all of this is just laid out and falling together. We're kind of just letting the water do it and I'm not trying to get the super stick thick heavy mud but the water is allowing it to break off and fall and it's eroding it so I'm able to get that stuff off. I'm able to get it up out of this pond and I'm actually forming a pond here. It's hard to see how deep it really is but we've got a nice little gully here and it's starting to take shape. So this is really starting to take shape and I'm happy with the way it's coming out. I've got to get a liner for this still. This is not how I'm going to do this. I don't have soil that's going to hold the moisture so I do have to use a liner but I'm not worried about that. We're going to get that set up and this is going to be a bullhead pond. I'm hoping to do some type of catfish. Bullhead are a lower oxygen critter so we should be able to get away with doing those and we can keep them oxygenated and aerated and warm enough hopefully so that they don't like go dormant you know so they're not just in hibernation mode. They'll feed and all that stuff and we can actually harvest from them or and grow them throughout the winter. So I really wanted to update you guys on all of this pond development because there's so much going on. I'm about to rip the tomatoes out. There's a ton of stuff going on and I just like to show everybody the little pieces and how this is working how I'm doing this and how much work it really is so hopefully all of the work is worth the reward once we get this excavated out the way we want it we're going to build the sides up to give even more mass and more depth to this pond so we'll have an even wider surface area and we'll have even more gallons in the pond just by raising the level of it so I'm really excited to get this going and I want to just keep developing this every time I get a chance and I'm not working on something else I'm out here working on this so I really like to have water features and water features with life in them total permaculture aspect and we want to really add this to the greenhouse and this is how we're achieving it so hope everybody enjoyed this little update here on the greenhouse pond and if anybody has any questions definitely drop it in the comments below and I thank everybody for watching this video